Welcome, everybody, to our first episode of Fangirl Chat. You are listening to Teresa Delgado from Fangirl Next Door and Trisha Barr from Fangirl Blog. Trisha, how are you? I am great. I've had an exciting weekend watching all the news from Star Wars Celebration Europe and yourself. Yeah, me too. Um, so we kind of wanted to let you guys know sort of what we're doing. We decided to come together as two fangirls to be able to chat about our geek world. So if you know how a lot of people do things, we tend to chat on Twitter a lot, but sometimes it's nice to actually get to talk to someone. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, more than 140 characters worth of saying, on at least on this uh, weekend's worth of news, and that might happen more and more as we go along. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do short segments, probably about 15 or 20 minutes, and you'll be able to find them on Fangirl Blog, Fangirl Next Door, and then also on YouTube. And you'll be able to listen to our chat, hopefully leave some comments, and um, be able to hear the opinions of at least two girls in the fan community. But we're going to start off with all of the Star Wars Celebration Europe news, which I feel is probably our first foray into the new stuff coming out about Star Wars, at least for the next the next couple of years, if not more. So we're going to start off with probably the, uh, maybe not the best panel, but probably the most influential panel to tell us where we're going in the Star Wars universe, and that would be the panel with Kathleen Kennedy. Um, I know, Trisha, this was one of your favorite ones, correct? Yes, I was excited to see what she had to say about the future of Star Wars. She's going to be shepherding it forward. So I thought she would be setting a tone for the future, and that's pretty much what came out of that conversation. And um, so it will be fun to talk about it. Definitely. So the host for Star Wars Celebration was Warwick Davis. And so for all the major panels, Warwick Davis was there um, sort of prompting questions and moving the conversation along. And I think he did a really good job with everything that he did. He definitely did a great job with the Kathleen Kennedy panel and helping us to kind of understand the direction that she's planning on going. Um, Trisha, why don't you go ahead and start us off with some of what was said in this panel? Yeah, um, we're following along um, the Star Wars live blog that was done by Dan Brooks. It's up on StarWars.com. And um, so that's where we're going to sort of follow down and we talk about it. And they started out with a video retrospective of Kathleen Kennedy's career um, from Jurassic Park and Indiana Jones. And we saw um, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, uh, also Dennis Murren, uh, Tom Cruise made quotes about Kathy's credentials um, and she's been in the business but a lot of people don't necessarily know about what she's done which is a lot of amazing movies and so she got a huge reception from the fans when uh, she came out on stage after the video which I think is a good sign too and um, what do you think about that? Definitely I think it's great that the fans at Celebration Europe were so warm and welcoming to her because I know there's been some nah, speculation that maybe they were afraid that she may, you know, not be the right decision, you know, along with people being afraid that Disney isn't the right decision. And I think having the fans behind the production team is probably the most important aspect for these films to be a success. So that was very encouraging for me. Um I also like the fact that she is sort of embracing the fan community. Um, I think, as I said before, people didn't know if she would actually pay attention to the fans and respect them, and I feel like she is doing that. Wouldn't you? Yes, um, and even Chris Sagaropoulos in his tweet said, noted that fans control everything, and there's another – I saw that from a lot of people's – Twitter feeds that she had made that comment. And I think really that comment isn't to say that we necessarily are controlling things, but that she understands that we, the fans are important to keep them happy with the story and to tell stories that will engage them. 
And that's important because sometimes you see franchises that just are going to do what they want to do and storytellers who just do what they want to do and they end up losing their, that passionate fan base. So really, um, and I've spoken about this before, Star Wars established itself as a brand all the way back in 1977. People wanted to see a certain type of movie and, and George Lucas always delivered on that. Um, even in a Revenge of the Sith, he put his little stamp on hope at the end of that movie. So I think she understands, and she even mentions that about Abrams, that his films tend to be hopeful. So it, I think that's sort of a hint of what we're going to see from the movies to come. Definitely. And one of the things that we've kind of talked about is the look and feel of the films themselves. And she makes a comment about making the films feel like they're real and going back to the early films to have a lot of real locations and maybe to rely on special effects when they're needed, but not to solely be relying on special effects, sort of like the um, prequel trilogy sort of did. Um, What are your thoughts on that? Well, they already gave us that indication early on in the first video when Disney bought the um, Star Wars and George Lucas and Kathleen Kenny sat down and George sort of quipped that it would be more like the original trilogy. And I think even he's saying that not only maybe in the storytelling um, style, but also in the look. So we had a lot of CGI and a prequel trilogy and we had a lot of less sets and they mentioned sets and going to locations. And I think we're going to see more real stuff in the look of the film and so and less with the CGI, use it to enhance something that's already there, which is really exciting for, I think, a lot of fans. A lot of us really love that sort of that realism of the OT. Right. And I agree. And something else that they talked about was um, going about selecting J.J. Abrams. And I actually didn't know that Kathleen Kennedy had known J.J. as long as she has did you um I had sort of I knew that he'd been about the industry but I didn't really know that they had had you know quite this um you know close of a working relationship for you know hiring them early on for Spielberg's uh Super 8 did you see the Super 8 movie yeah I did and I have it I actually have it and I really enjoyed it quite a bit oh I I it'll that well the good thing about that movie says that he knows how to um kind of mimic a style he made it look very spielberg and i think he can make star you know the next movie look very lucas like Mm -hmm. definitely and it definitely says something about jj that he's not he does have his own style but he's not you know intent on keeping it a certain way like he's willing to sort of fuse together different styles to create something that's going to give that hopefulness to the film and make it fun and exciting. And something else that Kathleen Kennedy says later on is that um, about maintaining a sense of humor in the films, which I believe is something that George wanted. Yeah, he, um, she said, he said, saying over and over again that not only are they aspirational, as in the movies, but they're fun. And he wanted to make sure that we maintained a sense of humor. And that's a direct quote from her. Um, I'm all for that, having some fun. You know, the, that, there's, I think we'll see some dark, gritty type of movies in the, in the one-off, probably, and a little bit more in at least the, you know, the sequel trilogy, maybe a little bit more of a hopeful movie. And there's still some tough stuff in, in the original trilogy, if you think about it. You know, whole planets get blown up, and, um, you know, there there is some hard stuff. But ultimately, in the end, it was a, a fun movie that you could laugh at, and it was very hopeful for what would happen. Right. Um, so in this panel, they actually go to some Twitter questions, which was pretty cool that they were doing this and, you know, bringing the fans into – the discussion and um we mentioned it before but someone asked about what has she learned about star wars fans and i like her response that she says they control everything and we're in service to you um 
that is that's very big to make sure that the fans know how you feel and I think that was probably if there was any fans that were on the fence or if there were any fans that were on the fence um I don't think that they can be now um what do you think well if they still are then I don't know what more she could do to bring them in I think that's about as big of a kind of a open arm statement that you can get from the filmmakers that you know we do want we're doing this for you and um I like I just liked how she said it how she presented it we've seen the same sort of um embracing of the fans from Dave Filoni and uh, in recent years and I, I even watching the you know some of the other short video shorts you just see that people are like that are working on it are so excited and they're so happy and they you know they they look like they're having fun and so it seems like they it's sort of that they're talking about having a community and they're realizing they even did the video about um, Ashley Eckstein's video a little short that they put up about all the fan groups that there are and um, you know supporting them the 501st and the Rebel Legion and the uh, Joy Builders so they're sort of seeming to being reaching out and including fans Definitely. And I mean, even stuff like um, the Caravan of the Force that happened, which was a project with Jedi News UK and Jeremy Bullock and Make-A-Wish, because I know that um, LFL was sort of behind that, helping to encourage it. Um, So, you know, it's really nice to see that they're reaching out into the fan community. Um, Did you follow any of the Caravan of the Force stuff? I have, I have, you know, between looking at, you know, the live blogs and the Twitter feeds, I've looked at some of it. I'm going to go back this week. I, I uh, didn't get to see all of it yet, so I'm excited to just see that part. It's, it was the same way with um, the course of the force. I ended up catching up, like, after the fact. So I'm glad they put up videos and blogs and stuff so we can keep up with it eventually. Um, it it was, looks like such a cool idea. I heard uh, Mark Newbold talk about it, and I was like, wow. So that's exciting. And and you look at the success of recent uh, movie franchises and, you know, the Hunger Games so specifically, they engage their fandom. Um, and so there's some lessons learned that I think they're applying Definitely. here to, yeah. So um, after, at the end of this particular panel, which um, we're going to save for an in-depth conversation, but we found out that John Williams is doing the score for episode seven. Um, I know I was flipping out when I read that on Twitter. Um, It was early in the morning when I read it, but, you know, trying to scream and not wake up your cats and your husband was (laughs) quite (laughs) fast. That's when you're like, ooh, should I I tweet, text my friend and wake them up or or something? Yeah, no, I I thought it was great. so some of the greatest news we'll we'll get. So uh, I'm excited to talk about that in our next segment. Yeah, me too. Um, but one thing I want to touch on is that after this panel was done, Warwick and um, Kathleen Kennedy went into, I guess, their backstage room somewhere, and they filmed a YouTube video that you can actually check out. And one of the things I liked about them talking in that segment was they were talking about their team of writers and um, JJ directing and things like that. And so what was brought up was um, Michael Arndt and um, Lawrence Kasdan, who are doing some of the script. I believe there's one other person. um, Kinberg. Yeah, Simon Kinberg was the other name. Yeah. And so... Um, that was pretty interesting to hear. And I actually had, I knew the name Michael Arndt, but I had to talk to Trisha and go and look him up. And, um, judging from the work that he's done before, I think he's going to be a great addition to the team. Um, he did make me cry about three times during Toy Story 3. Uh, and, and he, um, he actually taught a course, uh, way, way back and you can find it online. Um, where he taught about how A New Hope has, as far as for screenwriting and storytelling, the perfect ending because he manages to resolve the objective theme and the um, emotional theme 
all within like two minutes or something um, at the end of A New Hope. So he's actually a student of Star Wars, not just a screenwriter with good credentials. So, um, and some of the other movies, you know, Toy Story, and he has Little Miss Sunshine, which he won an Oscar for, and he's worked on The Hunger Games Catching Fire. He was brought in to work on that script, and I've only seen praise for what he did with, you know, he had to adapt the book, and they were having a little bit of trouble, and they said he came in and immediately found what they needed to do. So um, he's got some good credentials. Yeah, so all of that news is very, very encouraging. Um, so we're going to wrap this segment up. Trisha, do you want to let people know where they can find you? Yes, uh, Trisha Barr, and I am at fangirlblog.com. And then on Twitter, you can follow me at Fangirl Cantina. That's where I am. And, Teresa, how about you? You can find me over at fangirlnextdoor.com. Um, I do some work for some other Star Wars sites, but that's for another time, another place. And you can find me on Twitter at Ice Cold Penguin. Yes, it has nothing to do with anything geeky at all. <laughs> so, but thank you for joining us. Again, look for us on, on YouTube and then on the website. And there is going to be plenty of these because we're covering all of the Celebration Europe news. So be looking for them over the course of the next several days. Bye. Bye.